To some, big waves mean big adventure. But if you're anything like me, something like this, or this, makes you feel seasick. There are places all around the globe renowned for their gigantic waves, and only the most skilled, brave, and crazy people in the world have the guts to try and conquer them. But the cleverest also make sure to get it on camera. Nazare Nightmares Let's start our thrill-seeking hunt in Nazare, Portugal. Daredevils all over the world know the name of this place because of the sheer size of the waves that are seen off its coast. Like this monster captured on camera back in 2014. Just look at the size of it! But there's actually a lot more going on beneath the water. You see, underneath the surf lies Nazare Canyon, an undersea canyon which has a maximum depth of about 16,000 feet. Normally, when waves travel towards a shore, they're slowed down as the bottom of the ocean gets shallower. But in Nazare, the canyon causes the water to get incredibly deep before its approach to shore, resulting in waves that climb really big really suddenly. That's why world record-breaking surf records are usually made here, like this once 78-foot world record-breaking ride from Garrett McNamara back in 2011. How does he make it look so easy? Well, I'm not so sure about easy. McNamara later revealed that the water hitting him from that height felt like a ton of bricks smashing onto his shoulders. And if he thought that wave was scary, check out this one, surfed by Lucas Chumbo Chianca on February Between October and March, high winds blowing in from the North Atlantic Ocean generate waves like this, some of which can be over 100 feet tall. So when I tell you that the current world record for largest wave ever surfed is this 80-foot high beast, I expect a standing ovation. This madcap is Rodrigo Kosha, who smashed the previous world record in 2018 by surfing down this gigantic wave. If I was the one attempting a feat like that, the sea wouldn't be blue, it would be brown. Before we look at even more massive waves, make sure to sail on over to that like and subscribe button. I put out new videos every day, so instead of searching the seven seas for your amazing fact fix, just head on over to Be Amazed and smash that little bell icon so you never miss out on new content. Are you ready for your next adrenaline rush? Let's go! Tsunami Scare You'd be forgiven for thinking that the power of a massive wave comes only from its height, but footage from the Japanese tsunami of 2011 proves that wrong in a terrifying way. After a magnitude 9.0 earthquake off the coast of Tohoku, the Japanese Coast Guard encountered this behemoth wave just 3.3 miles from the shore. But how could a wall of water that long and high just suddenly appear in the ocean? Well, during the earthquake, the seabed on one side of a fault line had suddenly lifted. This lifted a vast expanse of water along with it, called a tsunami front. According to the estimates of the panicked coast guards, this particular front was some 30 feet tall, leaving them with no choice but to try and get over it. But then it gets worse. A second wave was suddenly reported less than one and a half miles from their location. As the earthquake continued to jolt the seabed, it sent out another tsunami front. But this one was apparently even bigger than the one before.
With so much force behind them, these massive waves traveled about six miles inland. As you can see in this jaw-dropping footage, they damaged almost everything in their wake. Entire villages and towns were swept away, and the Japanese government estimates that 5 million tons of debris were swept offshore. Damage costs from the earthquake and tsunami soared to $300 billion, while 20,000 people were reported dead and another 2,500 missing. Sadly, many are still unaccounted for to this day. Biscay Bedlam The Bay of Biscay is notorious for its violent storms and large waves because it's exposed to the rough Atlantic Ocean. But even on a calm-looking day, the seas of this bay definitely aren't to be trusted, not even by sturdy oil and chemical tankers. Just take a look. This tanker, called the Pink Coral, was sailing to Rotterdam when it encountered a huge rogue wave that rocked the entire ship from side to side. And that's no small feat, seeing as the Pink Coral is over 100 feet in width. For some perspective, that's almost the same as rocking a Boeing 737 nose to tail. Rogue waves, sometimes called freak or killer waves, are extreme waves whipped up by high winds. These gigantic walls of water can be more than twice the height of the surrounding waves, and as their name suggests, they're almost totally unpredictable. Because if you could foresee such bone-chilling displays of nature, who in their right mind would willingly sail out into them? Not me, that's for sure. Cruise Ship Chaos If you ask me, cruises are meant to be relaxing vacations, exploring the world by sea. Alas, I've never been on one, mainly because I'm not a 60-year-old divorcee who enjoys cabin fever and terrible buffets. But even I know they shouldn't roll around like this. This is the MV Viking Sky cruise ship, caught in the waves of a terrible storm off the coast of Norway back in 2019. The ship was carrying 1,300 passengers and crew when it lost power and was pummeled by the extreme weather. Reports even stated waves in this area reached almost 60 feet in height. Usually, the hulls of these ships are broad enough to prevent big waves from tilting them this badly. But when you consider that the ship itself is only about 100 feet wide and was dead in the water, it's not surprising that it was threatening to do a barrel roll. But MV Viking Sky isn't the only cruise ship to have been challenged by some giant waves. Just take a look at this soul-crushing footage supposedly taken from the bridge of the P&O Andonia, then known as the Sea Princess. This footage, uploaded in 2008, shows a cruise ship dropping down the back of a wave that was so high it caused the bridge crew to smash into the floor. Whilst the descriptions of this footage claims it's the Sea Princess, there are no reports that the ship was caught in these drastic conditions. However, around the same time in 2008, the cruise ship Pacific Sun was caught in a hellscape of 50 knot winds and 25 foot waves, about 400 miles off the coast of New Zealand. CCTV footage shows the tilt of the ship was so steep that furniture was flung across the rooms and around 40 guests were injured. Are there any self-proclaimed armchair detectives out there who can tell me whether these two bits of footage could actually be from the same event? If you guys have any stories of your own about getting caught in some gnarly weather at sea, let me know down below. I'll grab a paper bag and get back to some of my favorites. Aircraft Carrier vs. Typhoon 
Seeing ships and surfers getting battered by waves is one thing, but watching an aircraft carrier battle against the giant waves of a typhoon has to be one of the most macho events ever caught on camera. Around 2008, the USS Kitty Hawk was making its way along the North Pacific Ocean when it encountered Typhoon Fengsheng. With winds of 51 miles per hour that whipped up waves around 38 feet high. Considering this aircraft carrier measures over 200 feet from the waterline to its highest point, these waves were hardly a threat. Although it's pretty incredible to watch something that cost $400 million to build getting thrown about like a toy boat in a bathtub. But with all that money, couldn't they have installed something a little more impressive than those school bus style windshield wipers? Kitty Hawkward. Tanker vs. Monster Waves if these single giant waves already had you trembling in your boots, imagine facing a whole series of them. Just take a look at this footage of a small bulk carrier ship, which is a kind of merchant ship, taking on the giant waves of a West African storm. These are way more than just choppy seas. Whilst the channel Deep Sea that uploaded this ungodly footage to YouTube didn't mention where the storm took place, they do state that the waves were about 20 feet high. That may not seem like much, but wave after wave of this power and height has the potential to do some serious damage. And if you ask me, those waves look a lot higher than 20 feet. What do you think? Give me your best guesses in the comments below. Oil Rig Rollers Choosing to work on the open sea is one thing, but opting to live on an oil rig means you can't always escape the giant waves coming your way. Just ask the crew of the Dunbar Oil Rig. Located off the UK's east coast, this static rig is planted to the ocean floor and has a deck that's 164 feet long, 98 feet wide, and 72 feet high. That's one massive structure. That is, until you compare it to the waves that pummeled it on Christmas Day in 2013. That gaping void beneath the deck looks like it's almost the same height as the deck itself. That means the water surges filling that void and hammering the rig must have been about 70 feet tall. Apparently, the waves were so violent that morning, they woke up all the staff. What a terrifying gift to receive from Mother Nature herself on Christmas Day. But not all components of oil rig operations are planted to the ocean floor. Take the Borkholm Dolphin, for example, which is a floating accommodation platform around 145 miles east of Scotland. That's right. This semi-submersible accommodation station stays anchored to the spot using an electric and hydraulic mooring winch system. And thank God it does. Otherwise, these giant waves might have dragged the rig ashore. When hurricane-force winds of 113 miles per hour ripped across Scotland back in 2015, they whipped up colossal waves that can be seen rising to the platform's full height. Oof, anyone else feeling a little seasick right now? North Sea Surge the Southern Ocean isn't the only sea famous for its deadly conditions. Between the UK and Norway lies the North Sea. And thanks to its hellish weather and high number of shipping accidents, it's considered one of the world's most dangerous seas. Single waves in this region have been known to reach a monstrous 83 feet in height, but scientists believe they can get much bigger. Don't believe me? Just take a look at this footage taken from the bridge of a vessel in the North Sea storm. <laughs> You can hear a Scottish sailor laughing with what can only be described as delirium at such a lucky escape. What is it with sailors laughing at these near-death experiences instead of pooping their pants with fear? Especially when you consider that, according to the British publication The Express, that wave reached a colossal 100 feet in height. Had the ship been any smaller, the force of the water could easily have spelled disaster for them. 
How do you think you would have reacted if you were on the bridge of this ship? Tanker Trouble Do you remember Storm Nemo from 2013? It was a huge blizzard that battered the northeast of America and Canada, forcing governments like those of Massachusetts and New York to declare a state of emergency. Whilst most places were dealing with almost three feet of snow and winds of up to 105 miles per hour, those at sea had an even worse time. Not only were they battling all those elements, but they also had a series of 30 to 40 foot waves to deal with. Usually, ships like this 748 foot tanker try to avoid high caliber storms. It prevents the likelihood of them being rolled over by the powerful waves and becoming accidental submarines. But being caught short around 700 miles off the coast of Newfoundland in winds of almost 90 miles per hour clearly gave this captain no choice but to press on. They bravely plowed on through those horrifying looking waves. But that cameraman must have been certifiably crazy to step out onto the deck. Would you have braved the extreme weather just to get these waves on camera? Let me know in the comments. Storm Shocker the waves of the North Sea are hardly a laughing matter. Footage captured on an emergency response and rescue vessel from 2016 shows how Storm Gertrude whipped up some stomach-churning waves, with many estimated to be almost 100 feet high. These incredibly brave teams are responsible for the safety of people on offshore installations. Boats like this one are only launched when weather conditions are too severe for normal rescue craft. Even so, these boats only reach about 160 feet in length, and against powerful 100-foot waves, they tend to run the risk of needing their own rescue team. Just listen to the sound of the vessel creaking under its own weight. It's amazing that the ship hasn't sunk under the weight of the crew's iron determination. Big Wave Brave As staggering as the waves of Storm Gertrude were for this incredible rescue vessel, they weren't the largest they've ever encountered. Back in 2013, this commendable crew, who are dedicated to two oil platforms around 115 miles northeast of the Shetland Isles, hit some rough weather. But wait, that was the good part, because in the pitch black of night, these rolling waves became utterly nightmare-inducing. That may have made some of you feel seasick, but it's not over yet. Just wait until you see the mother of all monster waves that they had to face head on. How on earth are these guys laughing? My heart's pounding so hard from watching this that I just inadvertently reached for my water wings.